you have a higher chance of being struck by lightning, dying in a plane crash, or getting attacked by a shark than you do of meeting your demise from an elevator accident. That isn't to say that it doesn't happen, of course. I know firsthand. I was almost a victim of one. Which floor are you going to? I asked the elderly woman stepping into the elevator. Well, aren't you kind? Floor 7, please. I obliged as the woman claimed a spot against the handrail opposite me. I smiled at her. She vaguely reminded me of my grandmother. Wait, wait, hold the elevator. A voice yelled desperately from somewhere in the lobby. I stuck my arm between the doors and they opened back up. A winded twenty-something-year-old man soon emerged, dragging a short, blonde woman along with him, both sputtering for breath. Thanks. Nine, please. You got it, bud. I watched as the doors slowly shut before me. The elevator sat there, motionless for a moment, as if pondering its next move. Hey, man, are you sure you pressed the... Shit. Before the man could finish his sentence, the elevator began to plummet downward. My eyes connected with the old woman's as I grabbed onto the handrail for dear life. I'll never forget the look in her eyes. At first, fear jolted across her visage. Then, her demeanor melted into one of acceptance, like she knew that no matter the outcome, no matter if she lived or died, everything would be okay. That left me with a small sliver of solace as we continued to crash. It was over in a matter of seconds. Time seemed to move in slow motion as we hit the unforgiving ground. Metal screeched and crunched all around me. The impact sent me sprawling to the floor along with the others. I squeezed my eyes shut, praying that I would live. When I opened them again, the scene around me was absolutely chaotic. The man was rubbing his forehead, lying against the back panel of the elevator. His girlfriend was leaning over the old woman, who was completely unresponsive. The light overhead was flickering. I watched in confusion as the elevator doors crept open. They stayed there, exposing us to a long, cavernous tunnel. I shuddered, looking down the expanse and into the darkness. It was thick and oppressive. I averted my gaze, instead turning my attention to the old woman. She wasn't moving. Her eyes were wide open, staring listlessly at the ceiling. A small rivulet of blood trickled from her nose, deep crimson pooling beneath her head. The girl was hyperventilating as tears welled in her eyes. She... she's dead. I croaked, shattering the silence. Looks like it. She hit her head pretty hard. I doubt a woman her age could have survived a blow like that. The man said, groaning as he rose to his feet. His girlfriend buried her face in her hands, fat, sloppy tears wetting her palms. The man placed a hand on her back, but it failed to console her in the slightest. We need to call 911. Anyone have good cell reception? I asked, pulling out my outdated iPhone 7. The man reached into his pocket, producing a shattered, useless amalgamation of glass and twisted metal. I'm gonna take that as a no. What about her? I'm not getting any bars in this death trap. The man sighed, returning the ruined mess to his pocket before turning to his girlfriend. Abby? Look at me. I need you to work with me here. She reluctantly met his eyes. He locked eyes with her, tenderly brushing away her tears. I know this is hard, and I know that I seem heartless for not being more screwed up over it. But I'm desensitized because of my job. It's tough seeing death up close for the first time. I know that, and I promise you, I'll give you all the proper time and space that you need to mourn once we get out of here. But right now... I need you to be strong, okay? Can you do that? For me? She sniffled, nodding her head. Good. I'm so proud of you. Do you have your phone with you? Y yes She reached into her pocket and handed him a brand new iPhone 15 with a shiny gold case. He reached as high as he could, trying his best to get a signal. Nothing. I knew these new smartphones wouldn't be worth a rat's ass. Looks like we're going to have to try something else. Anyone got any bright ideas? He asked, turning to me. 
Maybe we could climb up the elevator shaft. I know it's a long shot, but it could take hours, if not days, before anyone realizes that we're down here. The man shook his head. Nah, that wouldn't work. Based on how long it took us to fall, I bet there were at least a couple stories down from the lobby. Unless you're Spider-Man, we won't be able to get up there. And even if we could, good luck prying those heavy metal doors open. I glanced around, surveying our options. That's when I saw it. A jet black phone symbol glared back at me amongst the floor buttons. This might work, I said, eagerly pressing it. A sharp static sliced through the speaker. We all clasped our hands over our ears. The noise slowly petered out until the system died completely. Awesome. Just what we needed. The man grunted. We sat there in silence for a moment. It was deathly quiet aside from the light buzzing softly as it struggled to stay on. Um, there's that. Abby whimpered, pointing into the abyss. She acknowledged the elephant in the room. We had all realized that it was our only option. But in the end, it was Abby who had the guts to stand up and say it. I was hoping it wouldn't come to that, but looks like we're at the end of our rope. The man sat, pursing his lips. If we're going to head into this, whatever this is, together, it might help to know some names. In case you didn't catch it before, that's Abby. I'm Ben. He said, extending a hand. Thomas, nice to meet you. I replied, returning the gesture. All right, Thomas, we'll need to use your and Abby's phone flashlights. Mine's obviously not going to get the job done. Ben said, rubbing the back of his neck. Understood. Uh, let's get moving. I don't want to be down here any longer than we have to be. I flipped on the flashlight on my phone. Ben and I stepped out of the elevator and into the darkness. I shone the light around, trying to get my bearings. We were standing in a tunnel of some kind. It looked like someone had drilled straight through the ground. Jagged, rocky edges framed the walls. My heart was in my throat as I took a step forward. I could faintly discern water dripping from somewhere ahead of us. What was this place? Hey guys? Abby called from behind us. I hadn't even noticed that she was still inside the elevator. There's no button for this floor. A chill ran down my spine. I was starting to get a creeping suspicion that this might be a natural formation, and that we wouldn't find any exit. Shit. This might be a cave. There's no telling if anybody even knows that this is down here. Ben said, affirming my concerns. Looks like we're gonna have to find out for ourselves. Abby nodded, timidly claiming her spot beside her boyfriend. Right, uh, we don't know anything for sure yet. Might as well see where... I didn't get to finish my sentence. The light in the elevator shut off, plunging us into darkness. Our flashlights glowed in the inky black like a beacon. My skin began to crawl. It felt like we were prey, like something sinister would lunge from the unknown at any given moment and feast on our bones. After a couple agonizing seconds, the elevator light flickered back to life. Abby screamed. Ben looked like he was going to pass out. I could feel the color draining from my face. The old woman was gone. But that's... she... it's... Abby trailed off. Impossible, I said. The pair looked at me. Eyes wide as saucers. We were all in a state of shock. What do we do now? Abby whispered. Only thing we can do, we keep going. Ben answered stoically. Ben was right. I definitely wasn't going to wait around for whatever it was that took the old woman to return. Okay, I guess I'll take the lead, I said. Every synapse in my brain screamed at me not to. But someone had to take charge, and it might as well be me. All right, after you, Ben said, extending his arm to the emptiness ahead. We walked in silence, drinking in every minute detail of the cavern. I noted that the ground was uneven in places. 
that further supported my hypothesis that this structure was not man-made. We walked for what felt like hours. Eventually the walls began to expand. I could make out a dim light in the distance. A soft orange glow radiated from somewhere deeper in the tunnel. Thomas, you see that? Ben asked, pointing ahead. Yeah, maybe it's our ticket out of here. No, everyone stop for a second. My brows furrowed in confusion as I turned to face him. What do you mean? It's light. It has to be a way out of here, right? Right? Deep down, I knew what Ben was getting at. He didn't even need to say it. I could be wrong, but normal light doesn't shine orange like that. It could be coming from a lantern, maybe a torch, I don't know. But we need to keep our guard up. Does anyone have anything we can use as a weapon? I don't... Oh, wait, I've got this. Abby sat, producing a small canister of pepper spray from her keychain. Well, it's not much, but I guess we'll have to make do with what we have. Ben said, unhooking the spray from her keys. Right, stay on high alert. We don't know what's up there. I agreed. Ben nodded, and we continued toward the mysterious glow. My heart thumped furiously in my chest. Fear gnawed at me like a piranha. I wasn't prepared for what we were going to find. As the light grew closer and closer, the tunnel gradually expanded. Before I knew it, we were standing before a large chamber. The room was perfectly rounded. The walls looked smooth as silk. Dozens of torches protruded from the rock. At the far end of the chamber stood a solid wooden door. Okay, this is freaky, Abby said, cowering behind Ben. You're not kidding. There goes our natural phenomenon theory. I muttered, struggling to comprehend what I was seeing. This is wrong, Ben said. He was extremely pale, and I thought he might lose his lunch. We're under a hotel. This shouldn't be here. And those torches? Someone had to light them. He was right. There was no good reason for that room to exist. And there was no logical explanation as to how that fire was staying lit. Not one that I could think of, at least. You're right, I said, meeting his gaze. But I think we all know what we need to do. Do we have to? I mean... Maybe we can go back to the elevator and wait. What if there's someone waiting behind that door? Abby squeaked, clenching a fistful of Ben's t-shirt. We can't wait here forever. Maybe there's a staircase in there. I know it's wishful thinking, but even if there is some kind of threat, there's three of us, and we're not empty-handed after all. I said, nodding to the pepper spray in Ben's hand. Thomas is right. It might be a way out. If there's any chance that it is, we have to try it. Remember, be strong for me, okay? You've been doing great so far, Ben said, locking eyes with his girlfriend. She took a deep breath and grabbed his free hand, interlocking her fingers with his. She glanced up at him with a renewed sense of ambition scrawled across her countenance. Okay, let's go. We hesitantly proceeded into the room. The soft clacking of our shoes against the floor sounded thunderous, as they echoed throughout the chamber. A feeling of dread crashed over me like a tidal wave. It only intensified the closer we got to the door. I couldn't help but feel that Abby's assumption was correct. Well, here we are. Who wants to do the honors? Ben asked, a slight tremor seeping into his words. Before either of us could react, Abby reached out to the ominous wooden frame. Why'd you do that? It's not like anyone's going to answer, I whispered. I received no response. We waited with bated breath for something to happen. Each second felt like an eternity. I found myself silently praying that no one, or nothing, would open that door. Okay, I think it's obvious that no one's going to open it. One of us is going to. Ben was abruptly cut short by a loud creaking. It filled the entire chamber sending my heart plummeting into my stomach. The door had been pulled inward. We were left to stare at a pitch-black room. It was too dark to make out anything inside. Hello? Who's in there? Ben called out, shattering the silence that had enveloped us. 
No one answered. Who could be doing this? It didn't make any sense. Ben, I don't like this. I think we should... Abby shrieked as a wrinkled, gnarled hand reached out from the blackness and latched onto her ankle. It pulled her inside at a sickening speed, dragging her kicking and screaming into the unknown. Abby, we have to go after her. Ben cried as I fumbled to retrieve my phone from my pocket. Let's go, I said, hurriedly arming myself with my flashlight. Ben led the charge, holding the canister of pepper spray out in front of him. The cavern was chilly, but I was coated in beads of sweat. What the hell was going on? We burst into the room, my light illuminating the center of it. I shined it around. Eventually, it landed on an altar. A severed goat head lay atop it, along with a plethora of demonic trinkets. A pentagram had been crudely painted on the ground before it in what appeared to be blood. I continued searching. Amidst the sound of our hearts nearly beating out of our chests, we could hear a muffled screaming. I followed the noise and directed my lights to the left side of the room. It fell on a pair of people. A figure shrouded in a crimson cloak had a hand pressed tightly over Abby's mouth. Its other hand was wrapped around a knife, pointing directly at the poor girl's throat. Ben took a cautious step forward. Please, put the knife down. We'll do whatever you want. Just let her go, he said, his tone disarming and tranquil. The figure began to laugh. A dry, maniacal cackling reverberated off the walls, sending fear coursing through my veins. Do you really think it's that easy? What I need is a soul, and hers will be more than sufficient. The figure bellowed. I could tell that it was a woman, and I had a pretty good idea of who that woman might be. Take me, I'll go with her. I held up a hand, silencing Ben. I'll do it. I'm 33 years old, working a dead-end job with no family to speak of. You two have something special. People that care about you. I don't. Take me. The woman pondered my proposal for a moment. Ben looked taken aback. You don't have to do this. There has to be some other way. He reasoned. I've run through all the options in my head. This is the best one I could come up with. Lead happy lives. Just don't forget about me, okay? I said, shooting him a knowing smirk. All he could do was nod. Does that work for you? I asked the figure. I would have preferred the girl, but I will accept your trade. I reluctantly walked toward them, resigning myself to my fate. This was it. I was going to die at the hand of some insane cult worshipper. There was no point in fighting it. At least I was sparing someone else's life in the process. The woman pushed Abby away. She instantly fell into Ben's arms, sobbing uncontrollably. The woman placed the knife over my throat. Are you ready to die? She whispered. No, but you should be. I reached back, smashing the vial that I'd been concealing hard over the woman's forehead. She shrieked, releasing me from her grasp. I swiftly kicked her to the ground and threw the hood from her head. She was the old woman from the elevator. I knew it. The skin on her face was melting like plastic in a microwave. Steam wafted up from her burning flesh. What? What did you do to me? I smirked. Everything was going according to plan. That was holy water. You see, Prosephina, I'm a demon hunter. I was sent here to investigate you. We've been on to you for quite some time. I had no idea that you go to these lengths to secure a victim, so I must say, I'm impressed. I don't know who let you out of hell, but prepare to make your return, I said, reaching into my waistband and unsheathing a cross with a jagged point at the bottom. No, no, please wait. This is cruel. You can't. Oh, but I can, I said, plunging the cross into the demon's heart. She released a guttural shriek. The three of us watched as the skin around the puncture wound began to deteriorate. She flailed and writhed on the floor, desperately pulling at the cross to no avail. Embers danced along her mottled skin, and the putrid stench of cooking flesh assaulted my nostrils. I always hated that part. Eventually, Proserfina was reduced to nothing more than ash. I turned to my companions. They were understandably shaken up. Their mouths hung agape, 
and their eyes were wide as dinner plates. How did you... I mean, is she really... Ben stuttered. Yes, she's dead. Look, I'm sorry that you two got wrapped up in all this. I know you have a lot of questions, so I'll try my best to answer them. My superiors had received word that Proserfina had escaped from hell and was causing mischief in the area. The woman she took possession of went missing last week. That's how I know that I was on the right track. Surprisingly, the old lady had an extensive history with the occult. She probably summoned Proserfina and got more than she bargained for. Also, we've known about this place for a while. This cavern has had a variety of uses throughout the years, but none of this nature. Even in the dim lights provided by my phone's flashlight, I could tell that the two were slowly processing the bomb I had just dropped. I remained silent, allowing them time to drink in the reality of their situation. Eventually, Ben spoke. But how did you know that she was going to crash the elevator when she did? In all honesty, I didn't. Some things just work out like that. If that's all you have for me, let's get out of here. I don't know about you two, but I could use a drink. I said, pointing my lights toward a door at the right side of the room. As we climbed the secret set of stairs that led to the ground floor, a grin began inching across my face. I couldn't have been more grateful. I'd managed to eliminate the threats with no casualties. Those two had no idea how unlikely their situation was. Your chances of being in an elevator crash are about 1 in 10.5 million. Your odds of being in an elevator crash and defeating a demon in the same day? Incalculable. 